Okay, uh, so let's get started today. What I want to start with is just talking about the exam. Okay, so <clears throat> let's get the exam taken care of and then we will um, maybe I'll have some time for some questions. Probably I will. Um, but the exam to review for exam number one. So first of all, uh, I need to talk about when will everybody actually take their exam. Um, and so what we'll do is <clears throat> groups. Uh, so remember when I s split you up into the groups to come to this class on Mondays, Wednesdays, or Fridays. So groups A and C will take their test on Wednesday. Oops. And then group B uh, will take their exam on Friday. Okay, and just so everybody knows, there'll be different exams. Okay, um, so, and I'll pretty much today kind of tell you sort of what to expect on the exam. So there shouldn't be any surprises either way, Wednesday or Friday. But yeah, if you're in group A and C, come on Wednesday. I'll give the exam in class. And if you're in group B, come on Friday and you'll get the exam in class. Okay, so what should you expect to see on that exam? Um, so we started out, um, Kind of talking about a few different things. Uh, the, the very first thing we talked about is area between curves. And how you calculate that. Then uh, we talked about basically cross-sectional area. So computing a uh, volume using cross sections. So volume using cross sections, which led us into, so that's the kind of problem where they said, okay, what if every cut you make perpendicular to the X axis is an equilateral triangle? Does that ring a bell? Yeah, th that kind of problem is what I mean by volume using cross sections. And then we got into all the different ways that you could compute volume using surfaces of revolution, like the disk method, the washer method, uh, and the shell method. Okay. And for this in particular, the disc washer shell method, on the exam, typically what I'll do is I'll say something like either compute or set up the integral that would um, give you the volume if you took some region and rotated it around, let's say, the y-axis. So I'm not going to tell you using the disc method or using the shell method, I'm not gonna say that. I'm just going to say, take this region, revolve it around an axis, give me the integral that will do it. Uh, now, in a lot of these, you could use two different methods. Like maybe you could use the washer method or you could use the shell method. There's no wrong way. What you can do wrong, and this is what you really should practice as you're studying for this exam is, um, do I know whether I should be putting X stuff into the integral or Y stuff into the integral? And I find that the most common mistake on this stuff is just that, is somebody should have integrated with respect to Y 
and they integrated with respect to X or vice versa. Okay, that people kind of know what the stuff is they're supposed to put in there, but they get confused on should I use X's or Y's. So remember what I said on that and practice these even more. Uh, and that's good. A good way to practice these is like get a friend, uh, get into a room, and instead of like it's too easy, right? If you just read it and it's in the shell section. And, and so you're kind of like, use the shell method to do this. And it's like, oh, I think I'm going to have to use the shell method. But if you get a friend and you sit down by a whiteboard and you say, here's a problem. There, here's a region. Revolve it around the x-axis. How do you set it up? Uh, you know, just practicing the setup of the problems is probably like uh, at least 80% of the work. So definitely practice that and like i said most of the problems on the exam i'll just have you set up an integral you won't actually have to compute it but there will be one or two maybe three where i do have you actually compute the integral okay so we did disks washer shells then we talked about arc length okay and how to compute arc arc length, then we talked about surface area. And then finally, after surface area, we talked about physical applications. Of the integral. So specifically, we did some stuff with work and with fluid force. So you should be able to do those too. Uh, some reminders for the exam, no calculator. So nobody will be using a calculator. And second reminder is, um, no note cards or notes of any form. So you do need to know the equations for all of these different things and how to set them up. So, uh, and that's basically what we've done. Uh, any questions about the exam? Uh, anything I can help you with other than what are the exact problems on it? Yes, sir. So I'm assuming the physical application problems are gonna be somewhat simple because or we're just going to take them to the integration point. It's possible. Yeah. Uh, if if I were to give some, I'm not going to give you any nasty numbers. That's what I will promise you. I'm not going to say, hey, could you real quick multiply 48.36 by 22.101? It's like, no, I'm not going to do that. So if I do give you something, uh, I'll, I'll give, like if, I'm doing something with like a density and a gravity and stuff like that. I'll give you those numbers uh, and I won't, I could ask you to integrate that one, but it will be nice numbers. Yeah. One thing that is like on limits, I suppose, is like uh, something like if, if you had to actually multiply seven, 75 times 15 or something, it's kind of like, yeah, we actually can do that. You don't need a calculator to do it. So, but if it was like some nasty decimal, I wouldn't have to do that. Okay. Other questions? Is there any area in particular you would say is special? Well, these. <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. I think I can pretty much guarantee you. So. Like I said, there'll be 10 problems. And how many sections did I kind of cover here? This is something one, this is something two. These are sort of different things. So let's just say three, four, five. This is six, seven, eight, nine. And so it's kind of like, well, you can pretty much expect that there'll be one of each of these. And then maybe I'll have something that's just really fun 
for the last one. You know what I mean? Uh, so something like that. Um, but you can pretty much count on that all of these things will definitely be on the exam. So I, I'm not a big, I'm not big on like, I'm going to trick you. I'm going to find something you've never seen before and put it on the exam. That's not really what I'm about. I, I pretty much will tell you, there will be an area between two curves problem. There will be a cross section problem. There will be a few dishwasher shell problems and so on. Uh, no surprises. So you definitely need to know all those formulas. Yes, sir. Uh, could there be a force on the dam or a plate in the water? Yes, and that's the, the fluid force. Yeah, there could be, for sure. Yes. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So the half angle identity, like, yes. Uh, if on this exam, if you needed a half angle, I would supply it. Uh, on future exams, I'll let you know if we ever get to a point. A point where you should just know that by heart, but not on this one. Yeah. Other questions? Okay, very good. Well, then we have a plan and we will have our exam on Wednesday. Uh, by the way, have any of you actually like ventured into the math lab in any form, either virtually or physically? Has anybody actually gone? That's okay. Uh, uh, but as you study and if you want a place to kind of check in and do some studying, Math Lab is, a, is available and it will be open tonight and tomorrow night. Lemons 15, typically 7 to 10. Okay. Let me write that down. Math Lab is Lemons 15, uh, 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock. And that typically meets Sunday through Thursday. So it will meet both tonight and tomorrow night if you'd like to go in there and get some extra help. That is a very good resource. Yes, sir. Would there be a um, particle motion, velocity, position, acceleration kind of thing? No, there won't be anything on uh, like physical uh, velocity, acceleration stuff. Yes, sir. Are you having off? Are you, are you doing your own summers? Right now? Yeah. Uh, so right now I'm pretty much, I do have, it's on the syllabus. There's a link to like sign up for a time slot, either on Zoom or in person with me. That's a good way to do it. You can just email me and sign up for a time. My official office hours right now are nine to 11 on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I don't really have any more office hours officially before the test, but if you want to, uh, meet up tomorrow or something, just email me and we can find a time and a place to meet up. That's kind of what's working best right now is just, let's just schedule a time, but you can sign up on my calendar for a time slot too. Thanks. Yeah. Other questions? Okay. So uh, did anybody have any Homework questions over, let's see, I guess 6.7. Yeah. Uh, 38. 38. Okay. Okay, so number 38 is on emptying a partially filled swimming pool. It says, if the water in a swimming pool in exercise 35, okay, then I have to go over here. So a swimming pool has a shape of a box with a base that's 25 by 15 and a uniform depth.
So we just have a box. Um, and it's two meters deep. So let's see how high is this? Uh, this is 25 by 15. So let's say this is 25, 15, and its depth is what? 2.5? Okay. So they're saying it's two meters full. So from here to here is two. And it is asking how much work is required to pump all the water to a level three meters above the bottom, above the bottom of the pool. That's a mean way to ask it, but yeah, okay. So it's like, let's see if we can trick you. So if it's three meters above the bottom of the pool, then this is two meters above the bottom of the pool, right? And so we got to go another meter like this high and pump all that water to that level, correct? Okay, so what's my formula for work? It's integral from A to B. Okay, so I have to set up some sort of a... Uh, an axis here and there's really a few places that I could set this up I could set the zero up up here I could set it right here I could set it right here I could set it right here none of that is good or bad just different ways to set it up so I don't have a strong preference uh, any strong feelings on this where would you like your origin to be Okay, bottom right here? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. So we'll say that's zero. So that's three, right? So this point is two. And so now we're integrating from zero to two, correct? So we'll integrate from zero to two. And then what goes in here is rho g. And then we need the area of a cross section if I'm at a point Y. Well, if I'm at a point Y, we just get that rectangle, right? And what is the area of that? Yeah. Why, why are you integrating from two to three? Why not from two to three? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. So what I'm kind of saying is like, I'm taking, think of it as just one step. Okay, instead of thinking it of like integration says, now do that a lot of times. What I'm doing is I'm saying at a point Y, I have a bunch of water that's a certain depth. I need to pump it out a certain distance, right? And so I'm saying at Y, I need to pump out some water. For all values of Y between what and what, do I need to pump the water? So the water lives between zero and two. And then I'm going to pump that water a certain distance, but that is, uh, that's figures into it in the depth, right? So when I say area times depth, that depth is saying, how far do I have to pump that water? I don't have any water to pump at like 2.5. So I don't have to include it in, these are all the water depths that I care about. Does that make sense? In other words, as I'm chopping the water up into pieces, there's no water to chop between two and three. There's just no water. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So uh, the area at Y is what? Well, I suppose it's just 25 times 15. What's that? Just off the top of our head, it's what? 375? Okay, so 375 um, is the 25 times 15, but there is no Y in that because no matter what depth I'm at, I still get the same area, cross-section area. Then the question is, well, if I'm sitting here at Y, how far do I have to pump the water? And it's not Y, right, because Y is this distance. That's not how far I have to pump the water. I need to pump it up to here. 
What's that? Not just one. So here's a, another way of thinking about it. If I'm sitting down here at zero, how far do I need to pump the water? Three, exactly. But what if I'm up here at two, how far do I need to pump the water? One, everybody agree? What if I'm at Y, how far do I need to pump the water? Three minus Y. Let's put that in. This is always, and do this on the test, please. I beg you, do this on the test. Then test some things and see if you agree with it. Put in a zero and say, if I'm at Y equals zero, how far do I need to pump the water? Three. So if I plug in zero here, what do I get? Three. That's good, right? What if I'm sitting at two, how far do I need to pump the water? One. If I'm sitting at two, how far do I need to pump the water? If I plug in two, I get one. And so it's perfect. So you can use a few of the numbers that you know to test your formula and see if it works. DY. And then of course, rho, g, and 375 are all just constants. So you can say this is rho, g, 375, times the integral from zero to two of three minus y, dy. And that's very easy. Okay. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, sure. Rho just represents like the density of the water. And then G is just the force of gravity. So together, they're kind of like your weight density that is acting on that thing that you kind of sort of have to fight against to do the work itself. So that's part of the, because work is basically a force over a distance, right? And so what you're basically saying is, okay, for every like cubic meter of this thing, it's going to be pulled on right with some force so how many cubic meters do i have and then how far do i have to pull it well how much cubic meters i have is like those two combined it's like a area times a width so that's volume so this is the volume to be moved this is how hard it is to move and this is how far i need to move it so this these two plus this is kind of like, okay, that's what's to be moved. And then you add this guy in and that's how far it is going to be moved. So you can multiply those two together and you get work. And this just says, and then add up all those different works that you had to do over the different layers of water. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Yes, sir. So for I noticed that some of the problems on your videos, you were using the number 9800, which is yes. water density. Yes. Okay, so is that? Is that legal? Yeah, as long as you're working in meters, and I will make it meters on the exam if needed, yeah. We'll just work in meters. So 9800 is uh, rho times gravity. Last time, I don't know, last time somebody asked me, I, I used the wrong number, and it's really quite terrible, but... Uh, I used the wrong number because I looked back just at an example problem. I was like, oh, let me just look back and get it real quick. And it was using gasoline. So, of course, it has a different density. And so I wrote that down. That was really bad. But, yeah, 9,800 is correct. 9.8 is gravity. And then 1,000 is your density. Other questions? Yes, sir. Can you number 30? 30. Sure. I'm sorry, number 44. 44? Yeah. Okay. So 44 says, suppose the tank in example five, let's go back to example five for a second. Okay, so we've got kind of this round tank. Okay. Anyone else 
If I wanted to do this right, I would do it this way. So here's my tank. It's kind of a cylinder sitting on its side. It says, uh, what? It has the length of 10 meters. So from here to here, it's 10 meters. Uh, the radius is 5 meters. So from here up to the side, it's 5 meters. Uh, it's on its side, half full of gasoline. How much work to empty? Okay, so let's go back, and now the problem was number 44. So let's say this thing is full of water. Determine the work required to pump all the water to an outlet outlet type 15 meters above the bottom of the tank. Okay, so here's the bottom of the tank. Here's the middle of the tank. Here's the top of the tank. I can set my zero wherever I want to, um, but we want to go 15 meters above the bottom. Uh, I want to call, just because whenever I use a circle and I want to put an origin in, it's almost always right to put it in the middle of the circle. Just because circles that aren't centered at the origin are mean. Okay? So this is a zero, let's say. And now I'll say that that's my positive y-axis. It's my negative y-axis. So down here now, because I put this as my zero, this is minus five. This is positive five. And then how high do I want to pump the water? 15 above the bottom. So what will be the number where I'm pumping it? 10, agreed. So we're trying to pump all the water up through a pipe, so to speak, that is going up to 10. Okay, so we need to get all that water up above 10. How much work needs to be done. Okay, so work is equal to integral. Okay, so just like I was asked last time, let's answer this question again. Uh, what do I need to integrate to and from? In other words, if I'm starting to cut this thing up by levels of water, where does the water live? Yeah, negative five to five, agreed. So the water all lives between minus five, five. We have uh, rho, we have G, which of course is 9,800. Okay, then we have the area. Okay, so if I'm sitting at a point Y, then the area is gonna go across here, back here, over here, back here. So what's that shape? That's a rectangle, right? And so we need to know what is the area of that rectangle at height y. Well, this part of the rectangle is easy, right? This part is 10. So it's 10 times something, this, whatever that is. So how do I figure out how far across I have to go here? Well, again, we've kind of done something like this with a circle before, right? And what do we use? Yeah, the Pythagorean theorem. And so we have this triangle where I have this distance, which I can call something. This distance is what I want to know, so let's call that x. And then this distance I know because it's the radius of the circle. So that's five. That I can just call y, correct? So I can say x squared plus y squared is going to be equal to five squared or 25. 
And now I would like to solve for x. So x is 25 minus y squared, uh, x squared, sorry. And then x is equal to the square root of 25 minus y squared. And remember, x was just from here to here. It wasn't all the way across. So if I really want what I need, which is all the way across, I need two x's. So I need to double this thing and put it in. So it's 10 times 2 times the square root of 25 minus y squared. Um, okay, so that's the area, right? Now we need the depth. So if I'm sitting at y, how far do I need to pump? Let's ask some questions. If I'm sitting at negative 5, how far do I need to pump? 15, agreed? If I'm sitting at 0, how far do I need to pump? 10. If I'm sitting at 5, how far do I need to pump? 5. So can you come up with an equation that gives me all of those things when I plug in y as those three values? What's that? 10 minus y. Let's see. See, again, it's always good to come back to, like, that sounds really good. Now let's test it. If I plug in 0, you said I should get 10. And if I plug in 0, you get 10. If you plug in 5, you told me you should get 5. If I plug in 5, I get 10 minus 5 is 5. And finally, if I plug in minus 5, I should get 15. If I plug in minus 5, 10 minus minus 5 is 15. Perfect. Dy. Okay. That's an interesting problem right there, actually. Did anybody try to work this out? Did you get this and try to work through it? There, yeah. So my issue was I tried to I put the, the zero value at the bottom. Okay. And I came up with the same formula, but I had 15 minus y instead because where it was oriented. Okay. And then I couldn't even take an integral because the, uh, the square root had a negative in it because I had to integrate from zero to 10. Yeah, so you had to integrate from 0 to 10. What's very difficult here is this is x, this is 5, right? And this is not y. Negative. What is it? Negative. Well, if you're sitting here at 0, this oh. is 0 going up. That's y. That is 5, 5 minus y. Okay. So the Pythagorean theorem, again, like I said, setting up the origin at 0 is is the center of the circle it's just kind of a nice thing but you can still do it it just gets a little bit messy this distance is five minus y so you'd have something like x squared plus five minus y squared equals 25 equals 25. yeah, yeah i don't know if this is what you got or not no i so i did get the same you got yeah, this. So that was, that yeah, and, and it won't work. Yeah, okay. it's not right. Yeah, you have to do it this other way, which, of course, is just a bigger mess. Uh, but doable. It actually, some stuff does cancel out because you square the 5, subtract the 25, goes away. There's some nice things, but I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Sound good? And I'll just leave you. Now, there's an interesting thing that actually comes up in this problem. Because you're going to get, like, you can pull out some of these constants, and then you get this times 10 minus y. Uh, maybe I'll just rewrite it real quick, just so I can show you, because it's kind of fun. So this comes out as a 20 times rho times g, integral, negative 5 to 5, of 10 times the square root of 25 minus y squared. Um, and then what? Um, minus y times the square root of 25 minus y squared. All of that 
dy. So I multiply it through by this 10 minus y. Now, this part of the integral, how could you do that integral? It's a u substitution. This part of the integral, how do you do that? Yeah. Is that with the arc? How do I say arc cosine? Something like that? I don't know. Um, no, it's not. Oh. So this is really kind of tricky. Uh, what? Because what is this curve? Can anybody tell me what is the curve? x equals the square root of 25 minus y squared. Like what does that gra the graph of this look like? Not quite. It's not a parabola. It's a semicircle. That's right, because it came from a circle, right? And so basically we just said take one half of the circle. So it's kind of the right half of the circle. And so when you integrate from negative five to five of 10 times this, so think of this, if I pulled the 10 out, let me, let's see, let me rewrite this really quick one more time because this is something that comes up that students are like, what just happened? Um, so if I take the 10 out, uh, let's write it this way, 20 rho g times, I'll pull out the 10 and say it's 10 integral from minus 5 to 5 of the square root of 25 minus y squared dy uh, minus integral negative 5 to 5 of y square root of 25 minus y squared dy close parentheses. So I just rewrote it, but I broke it into two integrals. And like you said already, this is a U substitution, not very hard. This, you could sit and think about it all day, and you don't know the antiderivative. And since you don't know the antiderivative, the first instinct is like, oh, well, then I guess I can't do it. But that's not really true, because what this integral says is how much area is there between negative 5 and 5 of that function? Well, that function is that semicircle from minus five to five. So it's just saying, how much area is there right there? But wait a second, I know how to find the area of a semicircle. It's just pi r squared divided by two. So the answer to this integral that's sitting right here without the 10 is pi times five squared divided by two, and that's it. So you don't have to take an antiderivative you just have to know what is this area. Does that make sense to everybody? So that's kind of tricky. And so it was worth, worth mentioning. Yeah. How would we know that? Well, that's why I thought I would tell you. <laughs> it's because how you would know it, uh, first of all, I wouldn't necessarily have expected you to just like stumble upon it, luckily. I think the way that you know it is you say, what is an integral? All that an integral is actually asking you is how much area is under that curve. So the question is, if I don't know the antiderivative for this, I could just ask myself how much area is under that curve. And it's just another tool to kind of add to your tool belt, so to speak, is that like, if in doubt, maybe ask yourself the question again, do I just know the answer because of the geometry? And it's rare that you do, but in this case, you do. You know the answer just because of the geometry. Uh, so that doesn't come up very often, but when I saw it, I was kind of like, oh wait, I think that this is one of those times where we can use geometry to compute the integral. So it was worth looking. Yes. So how, how would you write that? Like how would what would be the next line? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what I would do, so the twenty rho g is the same, the ten is the same, and then right here I just say, oh, 
that's just asking me what's the area between negative five and five of that curve, which is a semicircle of radius five dy. Well, what's the area under a semicircle? It is pi r squared, and r in this case is five. So r squared is 25. So pi r squared divided by two. And that's it evaluated. So I don't have to do anything else. I just replace that integral with, well, what will end up being 12.5 i. Okay, and then this other piece. will just still need to be evaluated using a use substitution. But that's how you would do this one piece is just say, oh, I know the answer. So I'll just put it in. Make sense? Okay. Cool. So you don't have to take the anti that constant? Like you wouldn't. This piece? Uh, yeah, or the thing below it too. This one? Is that meant to be like a constant minus integral? Oh, uh, this minus this? Yeah. Yeah, you still have to do this integral, and we still haven't done that yet. So you. It's kind of like what I did here is I just said, I could write this as this first integral minus this second integral. And so I have to evaluate both of them, but this one's like something I know how to do. This one, I don't know how to do it. So how could, do you deal with that? And so that's the only piece where now we can just drop this in. Still have to do this work, but this part is just done. Yeah. For that second part, you would you're yeah, you can, but you have to be a little bit careful. You probably want to distribute it first okay. because if you pull two from the 20, you got to pull it in here too. Okay. But then, yeah, if you made this 20 and then put a two in here from the 20, then everything's fine. So just be careful as you're pulling things from outside of big parentheses. But yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Part of the change of bounds. Uh huh. Negative five five is five over the negative two, which is zero. Yes. Zero. Yes. Zero. Yes. Zero. yes. <laughs> Should I do it? Because it's so. I was just doing that too. So, what he was saying is what if I do a u substitution here and it's 25 minus y squared, then du would be negative 2y dy. Agreed? So I do need a negative 2. And just to keep things simple for right now, I'll just say this is a minus 2. And then on the outside, I'd need a minus 1 half to cancel it out. Right? And so when I rewrite this, this is 20 rho g times, I guess, let's see, this is the 2 and the 10 cancel, 5, 5 times 25 is 125 pi, minus, or now it's plus, because I have minus times minus, plus 1 half integral, and now I need to change my limits of integration, and this is where things get kind of fun, because if I plug in minus 5 for y, Minus 5 squared is 25. 25 minus 25 is 0. And then I plug in 5. 25 minus 5 squared is 0. So it doesn't really matter what I have in here. I guess what I ultimately have in here is the square root of u du. But it doesn't matter because the integral from 0 to 0 is 0. So that whole thing is just gone. And then I'm just left with this 20 rho g, which 20 times 9,800 times 125 pi. And plug that into your calculator to simplify a little bit, but that's it. Yeah. Yeah, typically they're pretty big numbers because you're to pump, like for example, to pump out a tank that's 10 meters by 10 meters or something. It's quite a bit of work, yeah.
And what's the uh, what's the units on these problems? Joules, right? Yeah. So. Okay. That seems like a good place to end for today. So if you do need to ask some questions before the test on Wednesday or if you, or Friday, then please uh, contact me, set up a time to talk, or you can go to the math lab. There are upper division math students that are very good at calculus that work in there. That's free. Uh, in the evenings, that's a good place to go. Uh, do a lot of example problems. Get ready uh, for all those make sure you know your formulas when you come in on Wednesday or Friday. Have a good day. Um, sure. So, so what if this works? So we yes. And we kind of call them bottom by 25 minus. So we put it over 1. Yes. And times it by 25 minus 1 squared times 25 minus 1 squared. And then that would become 25 minus 1 squared. Over 1 times 1 squared. And then that would become 1 squared, right? Yeah. So you're saying. You could write that thing as 25 minus y squared divided by the square root of 25 minus y squared. Yeah, and would yes. that be, I don't, I wouldn't know what to do with that, but this is actually our final Yeah, so if there was a 1 up here, yeah. then it would be like an inverse sign. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Is there any way, is there, I don't know if there's any way to do that now. No, there's nothing good. now. What you could do, you could break it up into two integrals. Oh. If you broke this now up into like 25 over the square root of 25 minus y squared minus y squared over 25 minus y squared, right? Yeah. Uh, square root. That's fine. And now this one is 25 sine inverse of yeah. like x over 5. But then there's this one, and this is still bad. Yeah. Um, is it doable? Let me think for a second. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. Would you be able to bring this up into 5 minus 1 and 5 plus 1? You could. I don't know. It still doesn't help, though. Yeah. Yeah, at the end of the day, we will find a way to do this sort of thing without just doing what we did. Yeah. Um, but we haven't got there yet. We're almost okay. there. Fair enough. Like with the but you're thinking the right way. This is this would be a good way to attack it. And if this was a Y, yeah. then it would be perfect. If only, yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yep. Actually I had a question for you. Sure. So I'm in your online calculus. Oh you are? Cool. Yeah, I <laughs> So that's a really good question. The answer is by Wednesday. Uh, that, there is, and I'm going to send out a video soon, probably tomorrow morning, I'm gonna send something out about that. But thank you, yeah. It's been a really interesting for me this semester. I don't know what it is, but like every, every year, every semester, I have like this list of people who pretty much want to grade for me. And this year, just no one wants to. Oh. And so I've had a hard time finding a grader. And I've just been kind of waiting to like give my grader the grading. And it's like, I still don't have a grader. So probably I'll just end up doing it myself, which is fine. But it, it, it wasn't my, my plan, per se. So, but it's OK. Oh, how's your semester going? Uh, Yeah. Go okay. Okay. Yeah, it's amazing that tests are already starting. Yeah. I wonder how many people, do you know anybody else who's taking the online Cal 1 that's on campus? I honestly don't. You don't? Okay. Yeah, that would be an interesting thing to figure out. <laughs>